Gaming Masterpieces, Nights into Dreams, Best Score Attack Game Ever? Let's look into it. Games have changed a lot since I was first introduced to them in the late 80s. The demographic has expanded from boys and bachelors to all ages and genders, thankfully. <laughs> Budgets are as robust as films, and entire subgenres have come and gone with the Dodo and the Jaguar. Among such forgotten relics lies the once ubiquitous score attack, games tailor made for arcades and repeat plays. While typically fighting, shooting, driving, and action games, any game that encourages the player to beat the highest score and set new records could be classified as a score attack game. Unsurprisingly, many of the most well-known and popular score attackers originated in arcades, from Space Invaders and Pac-Man to Street Fighter in Daytona USA. And it's not by accident that the drought of pinball releases and other games closely associated with the score attack has coincided with the diminished presence of arcade centers worldwide. Some of today's console titles have kept the spirit alive to an extent with ranking systems, which were mostly, and please correct me if I'm wrong, spearheaded in the mid to late 90s by Sonic Team with titles such as Burning Rangers, Sonic Adventure 2, and before those even, the Sega Saturn's Nights Into Dreams. Which brings up the focus of this discussion. Nights Into Dreams. Is it the greatest score attack game ever made? Hmm. Short answer, perhaps. Perhaps. If not, it easily ranks among the best. A game as imaginative as it is divisive. What makes Nights a gaming masterpiece? 1. Great action game. It offers the feeling of freedom and unadulterated fun of flight on a level that is unparalleled among platformers. Also, the trippy visuals and dynamic music increase the sense of being in an actual dream, with effects that, to this day, I have not seen in almost any other games on any other platform. With the Saturn's 3D pad, the controls offer fluidity that makes Knights easy to handle at all speeds. So yes, it looks and controls like a dream. Point two, great score attacker. The core game is nakedly easy and simple. The tight controls are responsive and basic, and all of the above features make for a great score attacker, as they minimize the frustration from poor game implementation and allow players to focus simply on refining their moves and taking their skills and their scores to the next level. Since score attackers emphasize replays, the basic gameplay must be simple to pick up and difficult to master, with subtle nuances, secret tricks, and advanced maneuvers to consider. Knights has all of the above, and then some. Point three. Misunderstood and underrated. This is less objective, I'll admit, but I personally feel part of what defines a true masterpiece of any kind is an element of mystery. Of course, this also increases the chances of misunderstandings, and for being a relatively high profile game in gaming history, Knights is certainly this. Growing up with a Saturn, I couldn't count how many times I was asked, What's this about? or I was told, I don't get it. Which in hindsight is humorous considering how strange games like Super Mario Brothers are, but they're so commonplace nobody questions their presentation. It's a conspiracy! Anyway, being released exclusively for a decidedly niche console was Strike 1. Particularly in the Western world where the Sega Saturn was forever in an uphill fight against the N64 and PlayStation. But this was all Sega's fault and not the platform itself which had terrific games for those in the know who knew. Strike 2 was daring to be different from what many gamers wanted and expected from Sega Sonic Team at the time. Strike 3 was a product of the times itself. Nice was released when video games in general typically had little to no tutorials or handholding. Game overs were still a thing and not every game used saves. Back then, games trusted the player, for better or worse, to figure things out along the way, as that was part of the experience. Ironically, the same factors also caused some of the more hardcore to overrate Knights touting it as the greatest thing ever. No, it's not that, but to be fair, I don't know what is. But there's no denying that for a game that can be beaten in around 30 minutes, there's a lifetime of gaming good times to be had here. After all, this was back when you played games to play games. Story always took a backseat to jumping, floating, flying, dodging, driving, and spinning. And Knights is the kind of game where diligence can reward the dedicated with new secrets and oddities decades after its debut, thanks to clever level design and the ahead of its time A life system that really took off in the Sonic Adventure series. Those who take the time to get good and tackle new records will discover where Knight shines the most, 
But any gamer who gives it a fair shake can also agree it's a great game and still unique to this day. And when it comes to games in motion, few convey the majesty, beauty, and grace seen in knights when played by skilled players. Don't believe me? Use the YouTube and check them out for yourself. It's a great game to put on display, especially for friends and family who may not be into games as much. Basically, it's interactive poetry. And among score attackers, there's truly nothing else out there quite like it. Not even its sequel, Journey of Dreams for the Wii, while not terrible, had less precise controls and made some questionable gameplay changes that removed elements lending the ideal score attack environment as found in its predecessor. Bottom line, anybody can enjoy Knights and anybody can play Knights, but there's more than one way to play it. And how the player approaches Knights will more or less determine their experience with it and thus their overall opinion. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you soon.